Hey guys, Skill on Noodle here. Today I wanted to give a quick breakdown slash tutorial on this one day artwork, the Mech Factory. I wanted to show how to quickly get artwork together even if you're in a super tight time crunch. And while none of these companies are sponsoring me, I'm also going to be providing links to a lot of the asset libraries of resources I can't live without. If you want to download this scene or see my process on edit it, make sure to go check out my Patreon, link in the description below. Also, just wanted to give a huge shout out to all my patrons. I mean, we're just getting started, but it's exciting to see people have an interest, and I'm excited to upload some more content for those who want to check out my Blender scenes and get access to like 3D assets I've created and all types of cool stuff, so definitely go check it out. Starting off with the foreground, I began modeling a platform for some normal sized characters. I just used a cube and a plane as my base, and then created a railing using an edge with the skin modifier and subdivision modifiers applied. To begin the larger environment, I took a plane, added some loop cuts and beveled them, and extruded outward to create this sort of shelf structure. Although I planned on having it mostly in darkness, I wanted the feeling that this mech factory has a lot of concrete floors, like a half-built skyscraper. Before getting into the mech, we have to model the frame that will hold it upright. Going along with the factory idea, I thought it would be really cool to build the structure around holding the mech in place. To give it a realistic feel, I referenced cargo port cranes that have a square-shaped body that will help trace the anatomy of the mech. I stretched some cubes out to be super tall until they were just a little bit taller than the height I wanted my mech to be, and using shift s I found the center between the two cubes. I added a plane and rotated to line up with the cubes, and I modeled it into an I-beam shape. I added a solidify modifier and set the offset to zero and extruded it until it was the length I wanted. After applying the solidify I now had an I-beam I could use to fill out the structure of my scene. I added a meta rig human and scaled it up to represent my mech model. At this point I had enough context in my scene to begin framing with a camera. I decided on a square frame as I like this aspect ratio for sharing on social media and on prints. I also set the camera to 50mm in the camera settings, and I highly suggest you play with the camera settings as not only will this teach you more about Blender, but real world cameras and composition as well. And now I needed a mech, and since I wanted to get this done in one day, I knew I would have to download it from the internet. I went to CG Trader and found this low poly Gundam model, and I knew I could go from there. First thing I did was add some lighting to see how it would feel in the scene, but I still had some work to go before really getting into the final look of the lighting and composition. The model I downloaded came ready to go with a rig and everything, but the textures were going to need some improvement. Now for texturing assets quickly, I like to use Substance Painter, but there are free alternatives like Quixel Mixer that do basically the same thing. Before moving over to Substance however, I needed to do some things to prepare my model for texturing. First, I UV unwrapped my object. Now if you're using Substance, you don't need to worry too much about this step, so I just selected all of the faces and used the Smart UV Project option. This was good enough and I went on to create my Color ID map. But what is a Color ID map? A Color ID map is an image texture that defines the substance which part of the mesh gets which material. To create a Color ID map, start off by adding one whole material to your object, creating a new image texture and giving it a resolution of 2048 by 2048. Then apply it to the color input of your new material and switch over to the texture paint mode. Select the fill tool, then just click this little face icon and change the color to red. Switch to edit mode and select the faces you want the material on. Hop out of edit mode and click your object to apply to your color ID. I used four different colors that would represent the four materials I wanted. Blue paint, red paint, white paint, and a gray metallic material. Export your color ID texture as a PNG and your mech model as an FBX. Now moving over to substance, I imported my mech model and baked the textures. I put my color ID texture into the color ID node and now I could apply some smart materials, adding color ID masks to control where they applied. If you want to learn more about how to set up a model in Substance, definitely go check out some tutorials I linked below. I also went ahead and used the stencil tool to add some painted on symbols to the armor of my mech which gave a much more realistic feel and helped me build the style I was going for. Again, there's really no limit here so just play around and have fun. Once I was happy with the materials, I exported them and moved back into Blender, applying the new textures to my mech. The last thing I did was add an emission material to the eyes. I find adding some quick materials like this is quicker and easier in Blender and gives me more control of the settings later on. With my mech model in place, I continued to build up details in the scene. I first went about adding some more pipes and structure pieces to fill out the scaffolding around the mech, and at this point I began texturing my scene using some rust and concrete textures. I also added this scientist model I grabbed off of Mixamo, a free asset library from Adobe filled with pre-rigged characters and a ton of stock animations. I placed and posed the character in my foreground and gave them a little touchscreen so they appear to be calibrating the mech or something cool like that. As a final touch before lighting and compositing, I added some wires and air ducts to my scene. I created the wire similarly to the railings by adding a skin modifier to some straight edges, then subdividing them and using the proportional editing tool to pull them down so that they look roughly placed and mismanaged. 
For the air ducts, I just use an asset from Polyhaven. Polyhaven has to be amongst my favorite sites as a 3D creator because they offer completely free models, textures, and HDRIs that are on the same level of quality as their paid counterparts. These models are also super easy to use as they come in the form of blend files, so importing them is as easy as appending the objects that are all ready to go right away. I imported my air ducts, placed them how I liked, and modified the material to be a little less glossy. Now with my scene put together, I began the process of getting render passes I could use to finish my artwork. I like to break down my renders to passes with different lighting and touch-ups so that I have more control in the compositing phase. This makes the whole process a lot easier and gives you a ton of power to bring your scene to life later down in the pipeline. I rendered out a basic pass with no effects, a glow pass, a mist pass, and a few passes with volumetric lighting in them to play around with the god rays and beams of light that help bring the mech to scale. After all the passes were finished, I was ready to finish up my artwork in Photoshop. Now, compositing can make or break a render, so it's important that you take your time and play around until you get the effect you want. I began by bringing in my base render and layering different passes on top, messing around with their blending modes and opacities to get the desired result. After I got my base image ready, I converted it to a smart object and went into the camera raw filter settings. Now, if you're a photographer as well, this is very similar to Adobe Lightroom settings, and if you're familiar with photo editing, this should be a breeze. I mainly play around with the general settings like exposure, highlights and shadows, and saturation, but I also like to add some vignette and grain to give it a more filmic feel. Once I was happy with the color, I merged and duplicated my composition and added some filters from the filter gallery. These can be useful if you want a more painterly feel, and as a final touch I added some film photo overlays and played with the opacities and blending modes until I was happy to give it that old, aged feel. After some final tweaking, I was happy with the result. Hope this helped give some insight on how you too can create artwork quickly in Blender. If you want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Also, if you want to download this scene along with my other work, or get access to assets and longer tutorials, go check out my Patreon. Link is in the description below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.